I'm Sebastian Brandner. I'm head of the Division of Neuropathology at the UCL Institute of Neurology. And my role here is um, running the department. I'm head of department, but also I'm um, a, pro a principal investigator on a brain tumor research group whose focus is on, on uh, adult brain tumors. So my interest in brain tumors actually started by analyzing a mouse model where we're interested in looking at a tumor suppressor gene, PTEN, which is a commonly known mutated in gliomas. And how we started was actually um, inactivating, so uh, essentially taking out the gene function in certain areas in the brain. And what we found was a big surprise. It was not a brain tumor, but it turned out to be a malformation of the brain. And from there we took it further, so we, uh, we, we, in addition to the PTEN, for the P10 gene, we also inactivated other genes that are known to have a role in brain tumor formation, such as the well-known tumor suppressor gene P53 and the retinoblastoma gene. And we subsequently refined the model, and one of our aims at the time was to understand which cells in the brain are the, the origin of the brain tumors. The interesting thing was that both in our model and in humans, there are a lot of parallels how these tumors behave, how they grow, how they look, and what is the genetic profile of those tumors. And my research interest already started during medical school, where I did a study on the auditory system. And later on, I moved in, obviously, in clinical medicine, and I started training in a laboratory where brain tumors was a big, uh, big, um, uh, theme that was the laboratory of Professor Kleibus, who established the World Health Organization uh, classification of brain tumors. And he was one of the masterminds of modern brain tumor research in neuropathology. So this is how I started my interest there. Our laboratory has two lines of research within the brain tumors. One line of research is establishing a mouse model where we can study the initiation of brain tumor cells. So, trying to find out in which compartment of the brain uh, do brain tumors grow. And coming from that and being part, and this is part of the, for the current funding or the future funding uh, that is um, enabled to, uh, through the brain tumor charity, we are now looking at a gene that has been recently, in 2009, been identified to be a starter gene in human brain tumors, typically in young adults and in middle-aged people, so-called astrocytomas. So our mouse models mainly uh, address the biology of human gliomas. Gliomas are tumors that are intrinsic to the brain, that means they uh, are derived from within the brain, from cells, they grow from cells within the brain. These tumors can have different degrees of malignancy. Some of them are of lower malignancy, that means these patients survive longer. Some others, in particular, occurring in elderly people, are called glioblastoma, they're very malignant tumors. Our mouse model generates a spectrum of these brain tumors, ranging from the lower grades up to the very high grades. And that allows us to analyze the different stages of the progression of these brain tumors using a model system which is normally not possible directly on human material. I received funding from the Brain Tumor Charity to investigate the role of a specific gene, which is called IDH1 gene, and how this gene con contributes to the initiation of brain tumors. This gene has been identified a few years ago to be uh, mutated in a significant number of adult brain tumors, in adult gliomas, and a few, year, a few years later, a mouse model has been generated, and we have obtained this mouse model from a laboratory in Heidelberg, from uh, Professor Daimling, Andreas von Daimling, who made this mouse model available to us to study specifically the aspect, how do stem cells, or how is the mutation of IDH1 in stem cells contributing to uh, generating uh, brain tumors. Mouse models are a simulation of a human disease. Specifically, I would like to stress the fact that our mouse model cannot and probably doesn't need to mimic all aspects of human disease. It is very important, however, that we can model specific aspects of a human disease. For example, the effect of a single gene knockout, which means a loss of a single gene, 
uh, whilst in human tumours there might be a variety of genes affected. In the model, you can dissect the different aspects of a disease, whether it is a neurodegeneration, whether it is cancer, or whether it's inflammation. And, of course, models have limitations. We try to use the model in that we specifically look at one, two, or three uh, mutations in combination. And, therefore, we try to understand how these mutations play together in initiating a brain tumor. The grant from the brain tumor charity will help me understanding if IDH1, the gene that is mutated in, the, in astrocytomas in young adults, is in fact actually responsible for the initiation of brain tumors or whether it just is a promoter or some accelerator in the process of uh, a stem cell in becoming a brain tumor. So our work will mainly help understanding how these brain tumors arise, from which cells they will arise, and that will be indirectly leading to an understanding, a better understanding of the cell of origin and a potential treatment in the future. I think the biggest challenges, particularly for the brain tumor community, are those that it is still marginalized in a certain way because the number of cancer, they are underrepresented in the overall spectrum of cancer incidence. And therefore, the very large funding bodies obviously focus on those cancers which are common. And therefore, I think it's indispensable, it's absolutely essential that there's a strong community that supports brain tumor research in order to address this kind of relative underfunding. And a number of articles in the newspapers have been exactly criticizing this sort of imbalance in funding from the uh, Research Council and the Cancer Research UK. So therefore, I am really grateful for the receipt of this fairly substantial uh, funding from the brain tumor charity. I think uh, in the next five or ten years uh, we will probably have a much better understanding on novel line of research on specific type of modifications of the genome. And I think this is the way where things will go. Already now a large consortia have formed to analyze not hundreds but even thousands of tumor samples across the world where they align hundreds and thousands of samples and see whether there are different patterns, different subgroups, and it is already known that in medulloblastomas a number of treatment uh, options have arisen from the better understanding of the genomic, um, uh, of the genomic um, makeup of these tumors. I think in supporting the brain tumor charity, people will support research excellence, and this can be guaranteed by a very robust mechanism that the brain tumor charity applies to the quality control of the grant applications that we as a researcher submit to the charity, the charity then further submits it for peer review, so they can be scrutinizing the quality and the content of the grant applications, make suggestions for improvement, and then the charity has the opportunity to, um, uh, or has the opportunity to decide which line of research to fund.